Coming up in this week's show, we're off to the Triscoll Project Space to meet with filmmaker Michael Toomey about his new documentary, The Printer. And welcome to the Triscoll Arts Centre. We're here today to meet with filmmaker Michael Toomey to talk about his short documentary, The Printer. So before we meet him, here's a look at the trailer. Michael Toomey, director, writer, producer in Complete Control Films. You're after making a great documentary called The Printer and we're here now in the exhibition space in the Triscoll Arts Centre. First off though, tell us how did you get into documentary making? I did an MA in UCC for Film Analysis and Theory and after a lot of writing and thinking and talking about film um, I decided it would be better to make one. So I made a film called Town of the Time which uh, was a sociological essay really on the job losses and bad planning um, and the kind of fallout of the town centre in Yon. So that's, that was the first film uh, myself and Kieran McCarthy made. And we called ourselves Complete Control Films because we had complete artistic control over making that film. Um, I don't know how long, much longer that will last, but uh, then we followed that up in 2012 with Another Way Home, which was uh, looking at uh, mental health, a particular house in Charleville in Cork, run by a woman called Joan Hamilton. Uh, a respite home for women who had been through the revolving door of mental health. And that was narrated by uh, Jeremy Irons uh, and that reached a number of film festivals, um, which was a great boost to us. It gave us confidence to, to go on and uh, look at other topics. We had thought about covering old shops around Ireland at one stage. Uh, and the one that struck us the most is Bill Fields printer in Yall, in the centre of Yall town. And, um, we thought it would make a beautiful subject uh, because of the lettering, the old lettering, the wood. And because the shop hasn't changed really at all, it's kind of Dickensian, uh, Dickensian counters. And Bill is a lovely guy, shy man, but a lovely guy, and uh, has operated the shop as, as it has always been operated. And today there's a lot of white noise in film, there's a lot of white noise on the internet, and I was looking for something with space, something quiet, something that would give us a break from the kind of constant demand for drama, redemption, uh, stories of you know, people overcoming challenges. I was looking for something that was more reflective and impressionistic. And you were telling me earlier that when you were boys, you used to go in there and buy your stationery downstairs. And what's fascinating is that when you came up with the idea to make the documentary, you didn't even realise that upstairs there was just a hidden world of gems waiting for you. Yeah, I think the vast majority of people who live in Yall would only know the shop front, yeah, or the, uh, on the ground floor. But when we went upstairs, we found a Victorian printing house unchanged. And that was fascinating and beautiful to look at and timeless. But was there anything during the documentary process that really struck you? Yeah, I remember one particular day, uh, Billy was printing, and I think the hand setting of putting the, the lettering in place, framing it, putting it into the machine, the effort that it took, the handcrafted effort that it took, the artisan uh, endeavour to create this, what looks quite simple on a computer, right? But, you know, the work that went into it. And then, when we started to unravel some of the posters that were in the printing house, uh, just looking through the posters, pick, unfolding them out and holding them up and the length of them, the size of them, it became apparent to me then the kind of work that it took to make these public announcement posters, entertainment posters, cinema posters, and all of a sudden it just, it, it, I, I was aghast at the effort and the beauty in them that it took. The human work, the division of labour, you know, five or six people, the woodcuts that were come down from Dublin to Yall, that then would be illustrations onto the posters. The work that that took, and when I think of what can be done now, all of that is just wiped clean. That really struck me uh, to see Billy wor at work himself. What's next now for Complete Control? Uh, we're making a documentary on Red Barn Ballroom, and that has taken off in a life all of its own. Um, we uh, set up a Facebook page, an open Facebook page for people to leave 
stories, etc. And that page is just, it's like opening Pandora's box. It's just incredible. The stories and the memories and the amount of people who have an emotionally invested um, link to Red Baron Borum has been extraordinary. So that's a large project um, that is ongoing. And at the moment I'm speaking with the Horgan family who are descendants of the Horgan brothers, some of the earliest filmmakers in Ireland, uh, who also uh, had a Magic Lantern travelling show uh, and shot some of the very first film in Ireland, um, working around the same time as the Lumiere brothers in Paris and George Melia. And they are the original animators in Ireland. They're the first animators. So that project is at an embryonic stage, uh, speaking to the family at the moment, uh, and certainly hope we can progress with that as well. The printer is a beautifully told story and the Triscoll Project Space is running this exhibition until March 19th, so get down here if you can.